RV, Possum Patty here, and I left these markers out on the table over there because I wanted to review them. Now, these are the markers, the Ultra Watchables by Bic Kids that I got at the Dollar Tree the other day. And did you know that today was National Unicorn Day? And yes, we do have unicorns here at Soggy Bottom. Well, usually she's over in the other room, but I went over and I got her to bring her in for her national day today. So happy National Unicorn Day. <laughs> but to get back to reviewing these markers, yes, I was so excited because it said long lasting colors. So I'm hoping it has a lot of pigment and it says ultra washable. So I'm hoping that they're very water soluble. So we're gonna have a little bit of a play with these today and try to make some unicorn paper. So come on along. One quick look at the package again. There are 10 medium markers in here. This was the only one they had. I didn't see fine. I didn't see large. Maybe at another store or another time I might find those. This is by Bic Kids. Long lasting color. It said resistant tip and up to one week with the cap off. Hmm. And on the back it does say you can leave the cap off for up to a week for certain colors like brown, orange, yellow, green, light green, blue, light blue, and gray, and 24 to 48 hours for red, pink, purple, and black. Hmm. There's not that many colors in here, is there? <laughs> Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, there's. <laughs> And there's only 10 in here. Well, maybe there are larger packs that you can buy that have all 12 colors. This one only has 10. And it says not suitable for children under 36 months due to small parts, which may cause a choking hazard if swallowed. I'm thinking probably the caps. So let's get them out. And again, here's the swatch here. And there's no fancy names. They're called red, blue, yellow, green, black, gray. There's bubbles on there. Ooh, bubbles. <laughs> bubbles. All right, already I love them. They have bubbles on them. So we have black and gray and brown, purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, pink, and red. And those are our 10 colors. And before I start playing with them to do some unicorn paper, and if you don't know what unicorn paper is, we'll get to that in just a few moments. I'm going to make a quick swatch in my sketchbook. Now I'll come back and do the labels and everything after. I just want to swatch them out before I start playing with them. And I want to do two things. Wait, let me get... Hmm. All right, I've got some water here. I want to see if they move on mixed media because this is going to be one of my experiments. I'm going to try them on some watercolor paper. Well, I'll get to all that in a moment. So we go light to dark or dark to light. We better start with light. Okay, I'm going to start with the yellow. They're not very big. So I'm going to color in a swatch. And then I'm going to color in a swatch. And right away, see if it'll move with some water. Oh, and it does. Look at that. Oh, you can get some nice effects with that. So the yellow is moving. Okay, let's try orange. Try orange with the water. And red. And I'm just going to keep swatching here. Oh, what a beautiful day we had today. The weather was gorgeous. 
70 degrees. Yay! Finally. <laughs> Wait. Oh. <laughs> Can I talk and swatch at the same time? <laughs> Probably not. That's okay. No problem. We'll just flip them over and pretend that this is like what I wanted to do in the first place. Yeah, so today was gorgeous. 70 degrees and we're tired of waking up to ice on the ground. Although I know my sister has a friend up in Canada. <laughs> she said they just had some snow not so long ago. But we went on an adventure. And that'll be in another video. But you know, over the weekend I was talking about ice on the ground. And over the weekend, you know, it was so damp and raw and gray. I had to make a big pot of chicken noodle soup. Now, I didn't film making this soup. Ooh, look at that blue. Oh, that is gorgeous. Oh, I love that blue. Oh, and blue is my color. I love that blue. Okay, well, so far, these are performing nicely for me on here. Let me try some black over here. Yeah, so a nice big pot of chicken noodle soup. And mmm, mm. best thing about that is, you know, when you make chicken soup, then you have chicken soup for a couple days. <laughs> yes. Did you watch my all day lasagna, Grandma's all day lasagna? I filmed like the whole thing from. The sauce and the meatballs to the noodles to putting it all together. I don't know if I'm going to make more chicken soup. It's kind of a winter or fall thing for me. I don't make it too much in the summer. But if you would like some more possum patty cooking shows, just let me know. <laughs> of course, when I film something like that, I do journal about it. I journal about making pies and different things like that. Okay, there's one more thing I wanted to try, and that is mixing colors. So let's do some blue and yellow. And I'll come back in later and write notes. Well, it looks like you can get some blending of different colors here. Hmm. What do we like? We like um, orange, orange and what? Orange and let's do orange and yellow. Now you don't want to do colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel unless you're going for something very neutral. Something muddy. Oh yes, nice golden color with that. That's what I was hoping. And let's see, we can do red and yellow. Yeah, big adventure today. So good day to sit down and do some play. Now this is not watercolor paper. This is, this is mixed media paper. So there you have it. The swatches, and I'll write this out later when it's dry. And you can do a little bit of blending, and you can do a little bit of a water play with them too. Very nice, very nice. All right, I'll put that down to dry. Now, rainbow paper is usually just a really fun, magical, painty paper that you make by taking some water-soluble markers and putting them down on a non-porous surface, spraying it with a little bit of water, and then pressing some paper on the top like this. And when you pull it up, you usually get a beautiful washy pastel colored design on the paper. Very, very light and magical and pastel and, you know, just like a beautiful unicorn. So I want to try this with two different surfaces. I have this aluminum foil and I have some saran wrap.
Now all you do is take your marker. Now you might not be able to see this, but it is putting down some ink. And I'm just going to make some blotches here. And I'm going to go ahead with some purple. See, now I just put purple, so I, I don't have to be careful what I put next to the purple. I could put red. I wouldn't want to put green, because then you'll get brown. Or we could put blue. Put some blue in the middle there. I know, it's hard to see. Oh, you can see it there. Put some blue, put some yellow. So now the colors seem to be coming out brighter. Or more more inks coming out. Alright, so I just got a blotch of colors there. And then you take a fine mister. This is water. Give it a little bit of a squirt. And this is very cheap sketch paper. And I'm hoping it's going to be very absorbent. And put it down and just press. Kind of like you're using your gel plate. Oh. <laughs> oops. There's always an oops. And this is what you get. Oh, I did get some neutrals in there, but that's okay. Now this is interesting how they're all still like little dots. And it's a little mushy there. I wonder if I put just a tiny bit more water. Oh yeah, it moves it a little bit, just like in the sketchbook. I don't want to put too much. I'm very surprised about how bright they came out though. I was expecting it to be very pale. Hmm. Maybe these have a lot of pigment in them. Let's see if we can make a garden. I know, I have to be so literal whenever I do anything. Okay, so I'm just going to make some green. Like this. Oh, this, this sketch paper is probably way more absorbent than the mixed media paper. I think that's got some sizing on it. Oh, let's do blue flowers. Well, there might be some water on here still. <laughs> because it's going down better in some places than others. Okay. Put some pink. Pink is hard to see. Alright, let's just do that. A little bit of water. Yes, 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 yes. See, I like this right here. You know what? Maybe that's where there's more water. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's where there's more water on there and making it a little mushy because I like that. I like it with a little bit of the mushy and still some of the green, you know, darker dots. And I don't know if I can do that by adding water. Maybe I could. I don't want to put too much water. Especially over here, there's not much color. Or maybe there wasn't enough water over here. <gasps> I bet you that's what it was. Play and learn, play and learn. Hmm. Yes, I could doodle on that. All right, let's let this one dry. And I'm going to wipe this off because I want to try the saran wrap. Sometimes with the saran wrap, you can get a little bit more of a uh, wrinkly, crinkly, textured kind of something look. Maybe that'll stay down. Okay.
we still going with gardens and flowers? <laughs> you can't go wrong drawing a flower. No, you can draw any kind of flower in any shape, any color. And people will know that's a flower. It's just really strange. Okay, now this, this is even harder to see than it was on the aluminum foil. But see all this wrinkly stuff here? I'm hoping that that makes a, a little smoother up there. Some texture on the paper. I'm sorry you can't see this. All right, let's see. Let's go with some orange flowers. I can't see the green. If the orange gets in the green, it's going to turn like a neutral color. So maybe we better stick to yellow. <laughs> maybe we should stick to yellow. Or how about blue? Well, I must have put a lot of green on there. I think it was a little bit easier to see. Oh, you know what? If I put this on white paper, Ooh. let's see. <laughs> no, it's not that much better. I feel like I colored a lot on there, but I don't see anything. Oh my, oh my, oh my. All right. That's an experiment. Oh, look, look, look. Now you can see it more. Ooh. Well, that's interesting. It is very magical. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Wow, there's like nothing there, and I sprayed it with water, and now there's lots of color. Hmm, all right, let's get this on here. <laughs> all right, then we'll do one more. We'll do it with watercolor paper. I really got this one wet. I probably should have done this with the watercolor paper. Oh yeah, I got it way too wet. <laughs> way too wet. Look at this. All right. No problem, no problem. Pick up some of the puddles here. But this is beautiful um, unicorn paper. See, now this to me looks like unicorn paper. And I did put a lot of water on there. Hmm. So I'm thinking, I'm bending down, hold on. If you put a little water, you get these bright colors. And if you put some medium water and a little extra water on there. And if you put a lot of water, look at that. That's, that's a lot of water. And that's how it comes out. All right, this is the first one that came out like unicorn paper. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the foil. And I have a little piece of watercolor paper here. And let's just do one more quick for today and wrap it up. <laughs> wrap up today's review. You can see the color a little more on the foil. Let's put some brown down here. I guess if I played with these, I could come up with all kinds of things. So I might have to take these out again and do some more experimenting. Okay, I'm just going to stick to blue, green, and yellow because it is a morning dove o'clock already. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard when you can't see what you already put down on the paper. That's enough. That's enough. All right, I'm not going to put a lot of water this time. <laughs> that was just way too much water. Okay. 
Oh, my paper's not big enough. All right, let me get a bigger paper. Well, these remind me of irises. <laughs> and I'm gonna do some doodling and drawing on here, make a little garden, maybe some butterflies or something, and just have fun with it. Or cut it down so it'll fit, you know, like on a journal page and do some doodling on it. I could probably get a couple. Or this would be might be nice for happy mail. You'll have to come back to see the doodling that I do on here. And this one, I might add some more around this one before I doodle on it. And we have another garden here. Now this is the sketchbook paper and this one is the watercolor paper. But I'll doodle on both of those and see how they come out. And I will show you, I promise. And just to recap, these markers for $1.25, you get 10 markers. The tips are kind of small. It says medium, but they're almost a fine point, which might be good for some coloring or something. But, you know, if you want to make big swatches, it takes a little bit more work. And as you can see, the colors are nice and bright. And if you get at them right away with a wet brush, you can make them act like a watercolor um, marker, right? And the colors do blend nicely when you put two colors together. So this was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing this. I'm going to write on here later, you know, that there are big kids markers and get that all done. Yeah, I still have a lot to do, but <laughs> I just wanted to show you these markers and a little bit of a play with them. And yes, <laughs> I'm going to have some more play with these $1.25 markers from the Dollar Tree. Yes, I'm, I'm liking how they work on the paper and for this printing method. And I'll spend a lot more time playing with these. Well, I'm not sure how long they'll last, but for $1.25, I'm easily entertained. <laughs> so thanks for coming along today for a little bit of a review of the Ultra Washable Bick Kids Markers. Happy Retail Therapy. Bye-bye.